Hey guys, brand new podcast and it's number 500. Woo! 500 episodes of the Burt Cast. Congratulations, dude. That's a lot. Thank you. I feel like I didn't really do anything. It sounds silly. I am more grateful. And I'm not to, I not the podcast is continuing. I'm not end, ending it. I was thinking about ending it. I no, was you about ending it at 500. <laughs> I know. That, that would have been. <clears throat> but I was thinking, what if I just ended at 500 and just walked away? Um, I had, uh, uh, but I'm, I thought about it today. I was in the shower and I thought, I'm grateful that I listened to Joe. I'm grateful that I had Tom as a friend and I'm grateful I knew Joey Diaz because that, I was very, that little, that perfect storm created the first podcast. Joe being up my ass about start a podcast, start a podcast. You need to start a podcast. And then Tom having already started his podcast, your mom's house. And me buying the stuff. See, it's, it's normal that I would buy all the equipment to start a podcast. What's not normal is that I would start a podcast. And then that Sunday, um, Joey coming over, the fact that Joey was at the time, Joey and I were, were neighbors. We were neighbors as long as he lived in L.A. But Joey was coming over a lot at the time. All the time, we, Joey would come over. My dad was there. And Tom just hit record. It was, it was that was, that was. Tom, that was Tom. He just hit record and he went, it started. Just like, let it go. And uh, and that first podcast was so much fun that I continued doing it. And so I'm really grateful that I had, you know, it's, sometimes it's, there was an old, there's a quote, something about uh, if you want to be successful, success, surround yourself by successful people. Mm -hmm. I think that's the quote. I was very lucky to, I've been very lucky to be around successful people my entire career. And those successful people have lifted me up, and it's the reason. Uh, and 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 I want to thank everyone who's listened from that. And I know there's probably maybe ten people who have listened from that first podcast to today. I can't imagine that we've. I, I, I'm sure we've lost people halfway through where my podcasting skills were horrible or my editing skills were horrible. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a retrospective next week. Uh, we couldn't line it up in time just with. Everything going on. It's been very, very complicated. We will talk about that a little bit on the podcast. Uh, with COVID, I know that Leanne, you know if you listen to Leanne's podcast, COVID's run through this family. And so uh, we're all safe, we're all half, half healthy, and we're all doing okay. So that's all that matters really about COVID. That's the only thing I need to share with you about that. Um, we're all good. Isla's still fucking negative. God knows what the fuck Ow. that kid. She's got the kid. Now she thinks she's indestructible. Of course. She's like, I didn't get it. Everyone fucking got it, Dad. I didn't get it. Um, but Interesting. All... Is she the only vegan in the house? Just she, wondering. She is the only vegan in the house. Huh. Yeah, but that means she should get it twice. Probably. Shout out to Liquid Death. Wow, you um, murdered your thirst there. I just murdered my thirst. Uh... So it was a little complicated this week's been a little complicated um the last couple, last three weeks been a little complicated um so we're gonna do a retrospective next week from the road I am in Portland this week if you're listening to this right now I'm in Portland tonight uh, I'm then in, in Seattle Saturday and Sunday and then I'm back in Portland on Tuesday on Monday out of Portland we will be uh doing a retrospective of the 500 episodes not all 500 just highlights and not all highlights. But a couple Molly ones, maybe. What? You never know. You I, might, never I know. might play some clips from that, too. The best podcast, the worst podcast, um, some good laughs, all the stuff that over the 500 I would love to talk about. That'll be next week. Uh, that'll be next week's podcast. A new Two Bears, One Cave is out. This is the episode where Tom and I got high and drunk, and we came up with Two Bears Racing. Two Bears Racing is a reality. Uh, I have to buy him a Christmas a birthday present next year. And um, that is where my birthday present will be going is to start funding Two Bears Racing. So Two Bears Racing is happening. We've been reaching out to a lot of people. And uh, and, and and like I said, if you can give us any hookup in racing, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, is who I'm looking at specifically. Uh, I would really appreciate that. Is Two Bears uh, Sports Management like a legit thing now? Two Bears Sports Management is legit. We're thinking about starting Two Bears Records. Um, Hell yeah. But, but we just need more employees right now. We're a little upside down. 
could be an A and R rep. Hey, yeah, maybe maybe we could sign you to a maybe if, if I write the songs that you sing so that we can really get people in. But it's all stuff that like the first song would be "Where Are My Sunglasses." That's yeah. one of the songs I want to write really Tito's bad. And Tito's and Speedos. And Speedos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We have a great podcast for 500 for you. It's Jim Gaffigan. He's got a new special on Netflix. Oh, I'm on tour. I'm on tour. Portland, Seattle, uh, Fresno, San Francisco, Bakersfield, San Diego, Albuquerque, Keller Auditorium tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Keller Auditorium again Tuesday. And then, like I said, Fresno, San Francisco, Bakersfield, San Diego, Las Vegas, Albuquerque, Oklahoma City, Wichita, Springfield, Little Rock, Hunt. Does that say Honolulu? Huntsville, Alabama. That's a that's that's different. Huntsville, Huntsville, Asheville, Asheville, Roanoke, Roanoke, Richmond, Norfolk, Norfolk, Columbia, Savannah, Pensacola, Pensacola. I knew I'd do two shows in Pensacola. I knew it. I knew it. Uh today's a great podcast. It's a fun one. It's it's uh it's my friend Jim Gaffigan. I uh I, that's all I really need to tell you. You're going to love it. We talk about being a parent. We talk about Rogan. We talk about, because he just did Rogan. We talk a little bit about coronavirus or COVID. Why is it? No one call it coronavirus anymore? No. Just COVID. Yeah. Do you think Corona had anything to do with that? Could be. You know, the new Hooters variant's coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you get the Fuddruckers? I the think I got Fud the Fuddruckers vaccine? Yeah. They say the best vi- vaccine is Sputnik the russian vaccine they i'm being dead serious they actually say that yeah and i knew a bunch of people in serbia that refused to get the sputnik vaccine are you talking about sputnik they call it sputnik that's how you say it yeah i'm a uh local don't hassle me today is a great podcast you're going to fucking love it i can guarantee it i giggle we talk about our kids uh we talk about our wives Talk about food a lot we talk about food a lot we talk about mcdonald's we talk about five guys it's a great podcast. He has a special airing right now. We talk about his new special, Comedy Monster, uh, on Netflix. It's streaming right now on Netflix. It's the last I checked, I think it was trending. So it's still it's still up in the top ten. He is, I would say, out of the people, gener- I guess you got to throw me in his generation. We're only like five, four years, three years apart, four years apart. He f- seems so much more accomplished than I am because I've known him to be doing theaters my whole career he's one of the best guys in the game doing it without a without a doubt when you look at everyone that's been doing it he's been doing it longer than anyone at this level and he just continues at this level he does movies he does television he makes his own television he makes his own movies he's a fucking gangster dude and he's got antibodies ladies and gentlemen without further ado check out his special comedy monster streaming right now on netflix jim gaffigan Congrats on the new special. Thank you, buddy. That's appreciate it. What is this? Six? Seven? Nine. Nine? I remember when you did Cinco. Yeah. I remember yeah. Cinco. I, yeah. How do you name a special? That's interesting, right? It's like there yeah. is no. Well, the the interesting thing is when I did Cinco, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but one of the feedbacks, <laughs> some of the feedback from <laughs> Netflix is people think it's in Spanish. And I'm like, <laughs> They look at me and they think it's in Spanish and they're like, if they don't know who you are, they're like, oh, this is Spanish stuff. Yeah. And so, um, but Comedy Monster, I it's something I say, uh, you know, uh, in the inside voice more at the end, but uh, it was just, I, I wanted to kind of communicate different things. I don't know. It's weird. We work harder on our act than we do on like the names of like, like when you come up with a tour, you're like, "All right, uh, how about Birdie Boy?" Yeah, I, I, you know what I, I mean. I, it's it's funny because I think people think I know for a fact. My team thinks I'll be the oh, we'll go to Bird Hub, a great name for a tour because yeah. I'm always thinking marketing. I'm horrible at naming tours. I'm horrible at naming specials. Secret Time was easy because I was saying Secret Time a lot on stage. Yeah, and I've said it in podcasts. Hey, Big Boy uh, was just something that the girls were saying to me a lot. Right, and I was like, oh, I and I say it a couple times um i've always wanted to call a special sidebar really because i say sidebar nonstop. like it's well then that's a you definitely should use it yeah i wanted to call one unpopular thoughts i wanted to i wanted to call one of my specials strem domain 
because uh and here i'll explain why because when uh you know it's the the criticism among like like people would be like it's very mainstream jim gaffigan's very mainstream like that was a bad thing yeah. it's like oh you mean a lot of people enjoy it and so like Strem domain is mainstream in French, so I wanted to do that, and, and everyone is like, "It's the stupidest idea." It's like also, but I thought it was funny. I wanted to name my my book "Shh," the Burt Kreischer story. Really, just so people would have to go. He wrote "Shh," Burt oh, Kreischer funny. story. I, yeah. I, it's the names I've come up with throughout the years are, which is interesting because I feel like I heard I heard Doug Stanhope a long time ago say i've already written all my jokes i'm done this is like uh, cl clearly he wasn't done yeah but he was like i've written all my jokes and i find myself doing something i watch you and bill are the two people who have continued to stay authentic to who you are but grow as comics and it, that's the hardest part everyone always talks about like you know uh can you put out a special you can put i could put out i could put out specials every eight months theoretically if i didn't want my material to grow and right. i wanted to write the same isla walks in the room story the same me and leanne had sex story the same the dog story yeah. and you've you've continued to like here's the question how did you grow from hot pockets because hot pockets defined yeah. you yeah and and yeah. it was such a fucking explosive like oh hot pocket you know the hot pockets guy yeah yeah and then to go i'm gonna push away from that and you actually have in many ways never allowed the audience to dictate what you do well it's weird i mean you know this it's like as a comedian it is all self-assignment so in other words there are really really brilliant wow. people that don't evolve because they don't make themselves evolve self-assignment is the biggest that is the fucking if you're not the one checking your own homework yeah you gotta do i mean it's weird because we're also like the type of people that probably didn't do all our homework <laughs> never good at self <laughs> do you know what i mean but i think that it is self-assignment and it's it's weird because in the the span of our careers the rules have changed so when you talk about stan hub saying i've written all my jokes there was this commonly held belief that people would do one maybe two specials with the exception of carlin who was anointed by just sheer like you know volume of material but like the reality is is that it changes and also you know as somebody who tours as much as we do you have an s you have a responsibility that the relationship you have with the people that come to your show not only is it a different show but like a good friendship it can't be the same conversation like it can't yes. be the same kind of uh it's weird because some of it is self-assignment i don't know if you do this like where i'll do um you know i want to uh you know i want to say more embarrassing things i want to uh challenge myself with like stories you know like some of it is like i went through every food item so i had <laughs> to move on but also it's the you know the the process of getting our personalities up there it's it's never complete no. like you know like there's a silly side to you but there's also uh you know the, there's a side to birth that you're still getting up there yeah. which sound you know and the audiences are like just entertain us but like that's that makes makes the experience richer for them yeah it's uh, that's the struggle i found with this hour is that i i go i i knew very easily my assignment for the last hour it was like i wanted to write a couple things that were different than what i normally did and then with this hour i f i feel like i it happened so fast i was like and i'm i don't think i'm shooting it for, not, for a little while i go i'm right now i'm just like i want to scrap it i want to just i want to put it to the side and, and work on another hour and then bring the two together and have a great hour and then have an hour that's ready to tour it's yeah i mean it's so I, you know, with Comedy Monster, like the first 20 minutes are about uh, COVID. And my expectation was that I was not going to have any COVID material. I was, you know, I, you know, I'm always writing on the road, but my expectation was that it was going to be pretty much evergreen. But 
it's you know COVID didn't disappear. I didn't I want my material to be irrelevant for the time, and so uh, you know this stuff that in a way you know since COVID is never going away, it's now that material is kind of evergreen. It's weird yeah. in a way. Well, I, I have a new chunk. I, I haven't I haven't talked about any of this, but I talked a little bit. But Leanne Leanne getting COVID was fucking hilarious really oh, our whole fan like it, it was the whole process of how we got covid yeah, yeah. was just it was like no one followed the rules <laughs> like, oh, so people went out oh no no just in yeah. our house the day leanne felt sick she yeah. came up to me gave me a hug looked up and said i think i have covid <laughs> and i went what the fuck i was like have you not learned anything out of all of this and and then and then it just trickled down, and I haven't really talked about it. I I talked about it a little bit New Year's Eve because it, it just happened New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, but it was like to watch, and also like the first joke I wrote was getting COVID was a lot like losing my virginity. I waited it for it to happen so long, and then when it happened, it was over way too fast. Oh, that's and, interesting. And I was, yeah, and then there was coming in my pants. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a dead hooker too. There's always a dead hooker with yeah. me. The, but it, it's you know, but you're right it's not going away it's not going away it's i mean it's, it's we, we've become so numb to bad news like it's just and also you travel around the country and there's just a different interpretations of reality like you know i was in florida i know you're from florida yeah. florida there you, you know, were just at disney right yeah there's no that on instagram there's no like um florida's approach which i think by the way will be america's approach which yeah. is kind of like we got to deal with this unfortunately the barn's on fire but go on in there kids <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. which is kind of florida's approach which is i think we're gonna eventually but who knows i mean when this airs it might be like the 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 worst strain ever is now killing people by the hundreds of thousands i don't know it's so funny the, what i found with COVID is the first person that tells you the first thing is the most accurate when omicron yeah. came out this my, my friend stacy was like i heard it's not as i heard it's more contagious not as deadly yeah this was like months ago and i was like well let's hope so yeah and then and and then ryan sickler called me he goes have you heard about delta omicron and i was like is that a new one and he yeah. was like dude we just you better hope you got omicron and i'm like oh i don't even want to know did and now how's and this affected so your kids oh my gosh it's uh it's just unfair what they've had to go through. It's you, just you insane. Have, you have one going to college, right? Yeah, one going to college next year. Girl or boy? Girl. Girl. And how about your girls? I have one going to college next year. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Jim, I was in. I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, whenever there's someone like you coming over, I always talk. I'll talk before the interview. I, yeah. I very seldomly think about an interview before it happens. But I follow you. I follow both you and Jeannie on on social media. So yeah. I've I've watched your trip to. I watch all the boys. I watch the girls. I watch yeah, the yeah. everything. You start having kids when I had kids, but I was fucking flat broke, and I was like, I was like, I wonder what you two thousand four. Yeah, what was it? What was your financial situation like in two thousand four? It was not great. I was selling out comedy clubs. It was before Beyond the Pale. It was before really. Yeah, it was um, after uh, Sierra Mist yeah because you, you Sierra, i think sierra mist happened after because i remember we had a ba we had a babysitter so that we could go to a rap party for that oh wow. um but yeah no it was yeah no my daughter was in uh on you know slept on a lot of filthy comedy club couches oh. do you know what i mean back in uh, the yeah, day yeah right? i remember i remember selling comedy club couches by going They've got ice cream. They've got chicken yeah. fingers. They've got great, great French fries. Yeah. And they'd and, roll out the red carpet for them. Yeah. And so my kids and my kids grew up like during spring breaks and uh, during the summer, <laughs> we used to do these bus tours. It's so funny because like with five kids, it's it was it, it really is like emotionally scarring. You know, like we're talking about how kids, you know, our daughters, you know their senior junior year has been robbed from them yeah but like when i bring up a, a bus a tour bus to my wife and the it's it it, it it i can see her physically because it was so difficult with five kids and it was fun and the kids loved it but it's so difficult 
to get up, get off the bus, get all the kids. You know, oh. it's just a lot to ask any parent. And I'm like, I get, you know, I get to nap. Yeah. And, you know, I get to do my show. So I have the energy from that. But it's hard. But to answer your question, yeah, no, it's been hard on my kids. It's like we're yeah. still going to. You know, and then um, my 12-year-old got it. I, By the way, I did Rogan's podcast. And so you, I tested before I when I got there. And then someone from his empire, I mean, he's he's going to control the country eventually. Yeah. Um, was getting a antibody test. And they're like, do you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, so we'll find out if you had it in the last month. And they're like, yeah, you had it. And I'm like, wait a minute, but I had my booster. Is that it? And they're like, no, but but it's weird how long this pandemic's been going on, how I really don't know. Like, I texted yeah. Jeannie. I was like, I think I had it. And she was like, is it the booster? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, it's like, as as long as we've been through going through corona, like, I should know. Yeah. It's kind of like when I go out to dinner and I'm ha- handed a wine menu. As much wine as I've I've drank in my life. I still know there's red and white. That's all. Uh, I, I, you know, it's so funny. I, I just started a. Um, this is going to sound so silly. I started a happiness journal to try to track. <laughs> this is silly. to try to track because my my life is so in the deficit. Always, I'm always out of sleep. I'm always oh, yeah. hungover. I'm always like, uh, I'm I'm always, but I I push through it. It and it yeah. happened when I got COVID. Yeah. When I got COVID, I just thought it was a ha- hung- hangover. I've heard people talk about um, the side effects from the booster. And I live in such a deficit, I would never notice a side effect from a booster. Right, right. That I'm right. always I'm always out of sleep. I'm always tired. I'm always like, I just got out of the, off the, out of the sauna or off the treadmill or doing something. Yeah. And so I decided to try to quantify. At, when I got COVID, I was, I was like, I'm hungover. I've been here before. This sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did this to myself. This I guess yeah. this got to stop. I, I really partied hard the night the night before I got COVID. I really think that was part of the reason I got COVID. Yeah. And so, when the next day I went skiing, I was totally fine. I was like, I don't, I'm fine. Yeah. And I went by myself. Uh, and then, and then, the, and then, the, the next day I was like, I think I still have COVID, or I think I still have some, right, right. Still you hungover. have a soreness. You're like, well, yeah. Or like, is this getting older or, you know, like, wow, yeah. I, I drank too much. And it's like, wow, this is day two of a hangover. Yeah. Right? And then and so then when I st- stopped partying and was like, OK, wait, something's going on. And then when as I started to get better, I went, I would love to kind of find out what are symptoms of my lifestyle v- yeah. in, in the bigger picture. Like, like, a- am I frustrated? I get frustrated very easily, like but the littlest things. And I go, is that a symptom of my not sleeping, partying, yeah. driving? So I started trying to track it all. Like every day, did I drink? How many drinks? Did I work out? What was my blood pressure? I'm just trying to figure out like how to make it so that I'm happier, simply happier. I'm. So, this is so fascinating, Bert, because it's like I would think that a happiness journal is for people that aren't in touch with their happiness but like you you kind of like emit a level of joy that i think people are envious of well i I think i think i do but i but i think that there are times there are definitely times where it does it's not showing up because no and no one's around right like like i i would be very candid i have had um a very tough time getting older like i see things I, I am obsessed with history right now, yeah. and I don't know why. I, the other day, I just watched a four-part documentary on tanks on Netflix. That means you're an old white guy. Yeah, and I've watched it four times. Yeah, no, like history, that's a, a sign of aging when you're like, because I watch YouTube videos about history, and I'm like, what is wrong with me that I care about? What what, ha- what happened to us? <laughs> I, I My dad did it. I watched my dad do it, Yeah, and I was like, I was like, I get it. And he'd be like, buddy, history is my uncle did it. And they would read read James Mishner. And and yeah. And I remember being like, I'm living in the now. And yeah. now all of a sudden, I'm anything about history, anything about World War II in the in the Pacific, yeah. anything about Stalin or Hitler, I'm like, yeah, I am full. I think it's facts. I think we I think that comedians also were were, I mean, I think obviously it's a cliche of old men that we love history but like 
I think we also can we're we're desperate for facts, and so like history is filled with facts. It is it is filled with facts. I I I I, I started finding that it. I, I wake I, when I got I get it, back to my point, but getting older, yeah. I started having panic, not panic, but anxiety, dread about. Oh, so it's halfway over. Like I looked at like. Oh, that's interesting. It's it's halfway over, and then I start seeing things like, so thirty more years. Like, would thirty more years do it? Thirty, thirties into eighty, and then you know Bob passed away, which yeah. was, caught me off guard, and and yeah, and and because he was a young sixty five, like he didn't seem he was like, in great shape. I, I mean, obviously, yeah. maybe not as great as I thought, but he was in great shape. Yeah, he was. Uh, he wasn't like he didn't wa- do drugs he, or alcohol. He wasn't self destructive. No. Yeah. He was the guy that went to bed after his show. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know. And so all that started catching up to me. And I started saying to myself, if I want to make sure I live, I want, I would like to live to 90. That would be really cool. Yeah. I mean, so your parents are both around. Yeah. See, my mom died at like 53 and my dad died at 62. But they so were it's- Midwest. They were smoking. They were drinking. Dairy. They were essentially living like you. That's what that. Well, but, that is my. That is my. <laughs> by the way, that is my actual insight. As I but, started but going. But here's the thing, though. Here's here's. Uh, I feel like I'm your therapist. Here's what you have to understand, Bert. Is that there? You you are also a throwback to a different era where, like, you know, my father's generation, they could finish off, you know, a half a bottle of scotch and get up and play golf like yeah i do one podcast a day and i'm like i need a nap like i can't <laughs> i don't have that st- i you know like i you know maybe i'll have you know i've done some podcasts where you have like a scotch i'm like all right i gotta i gotta pack it in <laughs> like on rogan's i had one drink i'm like is there something in here is there molly in this you know it's like i'm just you know but it's weird it is strange that whole it's the reality of the age and i yeah. talk about it in comedy monster like when you you get slapped in the face about your age because we all think of ourselves as you know early 20s right oh but there is part of me that also is like yeah i'm glad that i don't have some of those attributes like i'm glad that my libido settled down yeah oh I, i'm i, do you know what I, I mean i say like it makes me a better guy i do not envy pete davidson yeah, like I, I i i look at it i was actually thinking about that today and i was like what's how's he gonna deal with 50 when he's gotta fuck a 50 year old like when 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 it when time catches up and one day he's not gonna get like that's like i, I kind of dig where i'm at now yeah I mean, we're, we want, we have amazing wives, we have children, and we have a career we love. Like, that's all you could ask for. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, it really is. And it, it yeah. I, I would love to be a tad bit skinnier, but not skinnier enough to throw a wrench in my career. Yeah, that's the problem is like, I, you know, I see myself and I'm like, it's not a good look, but... <laughs> like i mean i would like to i would like it to be easier to get out of the back of a town car okay <laughs> but <laughs> I, so so i'm watching my 600 pound life yeah and every time i watch that all the time yeah. with the girls and every time you see them get up out of bed it's a fucking pain in the ass oh, and man. i swear to god on couches i have the I, not the exact same amount of hard time but yeah. i'm literally like come on here we go yeah <gasps> oh yeah or just when i went snowboarding in utah and i was like and i couldn't get the very first day we went i couldn't get my boot done i couldn't put the latches on my boot oh really and i went and i it was like a come to jesus moment like am i too too fat to snowboard well by the way it's like i i go skiing with my family and uh i'm at the point where it's just try not to get injured that's my approach to it but like snowboarding you're going snowboarding yeah. like you you obviously you love it but didn't you grow up in florida when did you pick up snowboarding we got in the we were in the first generation of snowboarding oh nice. all right here we are 
we were in the first generation of snowboarding. So uh, snowboarding came out when before boots were a thing. So when you had to wear like duck boots to go to go That's snowboarding. Crazy. And so, uh, and but we were also in the first generation of wakeboarding because that was when they had scurfing. So uh, we got into it young and we used to go to like Beach Mountain or whatever in North, North Carolina. Yeah. And so it was all, everything was a beginner slope. So you could, you could really learn over a weekend. And I've, I've been snowboarding forever. And I actually, I'm, I, I walked into the, the very first day of snowboarding. I, the, I, the first day I went down and I couldn't get my, binding and i had seen this happen to a comic uh i I won't say his name but uh i'd seen this happen to a comic i'll say his name to you but just edit it out um yeah he had gone snowboarding with us one time and i saw him not be able to get his boots on and his bindings and i was i and i thought that'll never happen to me and then it happened to me and i and i was like fuck and so i spent the day i i found that i could stand and do it a little easier but i was like i'm still too fat i went into the to the ski shop and i was like hey i need the snap in but i need different bindings because i'm too fat for my bindings guys like it happens to a lot of fat guys and the way he said it i went so i I said to myself this is where my punitive part of my brain showed up i said i'm not changing my bindings i'm gonna punish myself because i know for a fact if i if i know that this is going to be a thing i won't eat like an asshole the night before and i won't drink right so i and i and then i i ended up by the end of the trip totally fine getting my bindings on just didn't eat for like three days <laughs> didn't drink <laughs> so women so like how how unhealthy do you eat that can i that's so that's why i started that journal cause i don't know i couldn't tell you yeah. i don't things don't register me to me the way things would register to certain people like when you go like bacon right yeah i cooked bacon for the girls the other day and so it was two I, I I don't even know what regular people eat, but I made two things of bacon. Two containers two, for, for three people. For three people. All right, that's too much. Okay. Go on. Yeah. And so I made two things, but and then <laughs> and I put those in the tray. Because you don't want to yeah. fill you want to fill up the tray. So I fill, put them in the right. tray, put them in the in the oven for 400, 425 degrees for 20 minutes. And yeah. then I had half a a thing of container of bacon off to the side. I said, Well, I'm gonna cook that on the on the griddle. And cook the rest of it up. You don't just put bacon back in the thing. You cook it. Yeah. I cooked all of that and then I ate all of that. Yeah. Well, the girls had some, right? <laughs> no. That's the, what's so weird. The girls had two pieces of bacon each. And yeah. I ate all the bacon. Yeah. I ate all of it. I didn't even I, I ate all, all of it th- in my head going, it's it's protein. You know, like Yeah. But it's not. And it's not. And and then I and then of course it's I all some, fat. And then and then yeah. though you want to know the kicker is Leanne got mad at me because I didn't she made uh she made pancakes and i didn't i never eat her pancakes i don't want the carbs she goes goes, you always eat your stuff like you make bacon and you eat your stuff you never eat the stuff i make so i put away an egg sandwich that i had already made and i ate pancakes with her and so i have no frame of reference for why i'm feeling a little disgusting in the middle of the day yeah and then i eat the bacon and i go and then i look back and i go oh so what i thought was i'm gonna start putting things down honestly in like this journal to try to find out like i noticed that if i don't eat if i don't overeat i don't feel uncomfortable all day yeah it's so weird it's i mean obviously that's something i should do by the way i think people would be interested to know what bert kreiser does like because you work out also i work out today i ran today i ran three miles in 26 minutes because i had a meeting and so like i'll do that i'll do that to myself a lot i'll go i got a meeting and then if i know that i'm racing to get into a meeting or zoom then i'll run harder so like i i but it's punitive it's it's never it's never done with joy like i never get on the treadmill and go i can't wait to go for a jog i do it but i don't think anyone does though i think yeah i don't think anyone enjoys it it's weird i was kind of like did you lose weight during the pandemic i did i mean i didn't eat bread yeah. i you know i i got rid of sugar you know like there was some here and there but i lost like 25 pounds like that i didn't drink That's i didn't thing. drink for a long time my wife turned she started like doing cocktails and i'm like it was really appealing oh, leanne started doing this fun 
Whenever I don't drink, Leanne starts going, ooh, I wouldn't mind a signature cocktail. Right, right. And I'm like, what the fuck? Now you're making it fun? <laughs> and when so, I so you stopped drinking for a while, drinking too. for And so months. you drop the weight. Dropped and the, the thing weight, is, yeah. is like people don't realize then you go out on tour and the reward we have is food, right? Oh, it's food. It's food. Well, you're, you're out boozing, too. But I'm like, boozing, but food, I'm unaware of just how bad i eat like the other day i did a thing on on social media on twitter i I very seldom use twitter i will put out something that to see what other people's responses are yeah yeah, it's usually when i think of something where i go uh like the other day i thought top five comedies of my life yeah so i put them out and then you they get a good response and it's good interaction and you read them and it's fun nothing hateful the other one the other day i said what's your go-to mcdonald's order oh yeah and my go-to mcdonald's you know your go-to mcdonald's order oh yeah yeah (laughs) Uh, I say it with a little bit of fear because it's we've actually as a family we've shifted from McDonald's to Five Guys, which is oh my good. god, Five Guys is so much better. Have you ever yeah. had the breakfast sandwich at Five Guys? No. Have oh. you ever had the um, Shake Shack breakfast sandwich? That's insane, for real. I mean, if you like, like I, I like sausage. You know, like a sausage <laughs> biscuit sausage. stuff. It's like. But all right, so my McDonald's is a double quarter pounder with cheese, which is probably like ten billion calories. Uh, I don't know what it is, but that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, and then fries and a uh, diet coke. Okay. Yeah. Mine is a. Wait a minute. You go and like you get more than one entree. Oh yeah. Oh all right. Yeah. So mine is well, mine's very simple, but it's uh, it's a Big Mac meal supersized. Yeah. Four cheeseburgers. Well, now why the. Uh, Four cheeseburgers. McDonald's cheeseburgers. Uh, cheeseburger, just a cheese, simple cheeseburger done anywhere is one of my favorite things. But what I do with the McDonald's cheeseburger, and I'd like to brag a little bit because I got written up. First of all, a, when you talk about McDonald's, there's no bragging involved. <laughs> <laughs> there should be shame and embarrassment. Go on. By the way, my my whole meal in total is 2,500 calories. That's And that, and that is my go-to meal. Yeah, so, but, all right, here, I want to, all right, so go on. So then. Well, you, what I do with the McDonald's yeah. cheeseburgers is I take the bottom bun off and I taco them so it's less calories. So bottom, bottom bun's a little thicker and it's got none of the business on it. Wait a minute. Are you a third grader? Like, who would do something <laughs> like that? Like, what, like, you taco them. Like, that yeah. is not a thing. It is. And it's, and by the way, now that I've introduced oh, it by to the you, way, you should do. <laughs> what? You should do a thing with McDonald's. That's what you should do. You should pitch this to McDonald's. They would be all over it. Oh, right. I would. I, I well, that's a good marketing idea. The Bert, because didn't they have like a? Uh, they've done like meals with some uh, hip hop star, right? What, what I found is you could do. There's so many different add-ons you could do to a McDonald's meal. Like there's a thing called a a um, a McGangbang, which what? is a it's a double cheeseburger. Type in McGangbang. It's a double cheeseburger with a fish fillet shoved into it. So, like, there are meals people do. You can yeah, also that's, get that's the. That's not right. I don't can, like You that. can get the fish fillet bun yeah. on anything. The fish fillet bun is thinner than all the other buns. Oh, I don't know. You can that. also take the double. You can do any add ons. They'll do anything for you. So, if you like the double quarter pounder, you yeah. can get a double quarter pounder done Big Mac style. Oh yeah, that sounds that amazing. Sounds here's here's fantastic. the thing about like I worked in advertising uh and I and I wrote commercials and the thing is is you do research. So like the quality of a small hamburger versus the quarter pounder is like it's a different quality of meat in the quarter pounder than the small hamburger. Really? Yeah. So I mean it's all garbage, but it's uh you know, like a quarter pounder with cheese tastes better than a hamburger. It in does my opinion. taste. Better. I remember being introduced to a quarter pounder with cheese. I remember where I was when some people said, know where. Like, where were you when nine eleven happened? You're like, I remember <laughs> where I was when I was introduced to a quarter pounder with cheese. It's the McDonald's on Dale Mabry, uh, <laughs> in Carrollwood, over yeah. by. There's a there's a little. Um, it's and my buddy's dad owned McDonald's. Oh wow! And he we could eat there for free. We, oh my god! Really? <clears throat> oh, dude, we ate there. That a kid lot. must have been popular. Uh, he was, but he was, he was, he was, he definitely still is. He still owns all the McDonald's in Florida. Oh he, my God. Um, he, you could go in and get anything. His name is Matt Gates. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> 
I have almost one guarantee in my life. If I'm happy, I'm hydrated. Let me rephrase that. If I'm hydrated, I'm happy. That's probably it. But if I am happy, I am hydrated. And I hydrate with liquid IV. I just put, I'm saying this to the guys in the back, I just put probably five pounds of liquid IV on our bus. One stick of liquid IV, and we've got hundreds of sticks, one stick in 16 ounces of water hydrates you faster and more efficiently than water alone. It has incredible hydration flavors like watermelon, lemon, lime, strawberry, pina colada, and more. I love liquid IV because I always wake up in a deficit. You'll hear me talk about this in the podcast. I'm starting a happiness journal, and it's mostly to figure out what I do and don't like about myself and how to change those things. And I'm telling you right now, when I get hydrated, I am, I am in the green. I feel awesome. And with liquid IV, I know that I'm getting B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C, the five essential vitamins with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and it absorbs rapidly into your water. Key ingredient into the bloodstream, boom, one stick of liquid IV into 16 ounces of water, and you are more hydrated than when you would be with just that water. Grab liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code BIRD at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code BIRD at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com and use your promo code BIRD. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We I talk a lot about BetterHelp on this show. Halston is using BetterHelp currently. Yeah, I, I actually really love it. Um, my therapist's name is Elizabeth, and I filled out this questionnaire that I had to write saying that I had like ADHD and I'm come from a military family, just things that like make me just a little bit different. Yeah. And they matched me with a therapist who has a son who has ADHD and she's a military kid herself. So she understands me on like a totally different level than any other therapist I've had. And it's fucking awesome. Well, like I said, we talk a lot about BetterHelp on this show. And this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around better about around mental health. For example, some people think you should. Wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy. That is not true. For me, sometimes I have. Sometimes I have. And Leanne will usually put me in therapy. But it's nice to know that I can use therapy as a tool to utilize things before things get worse. And it can help you avoid those lows. That's what therapy, it's, it's almost like working out. You don't have to wait till your fatty shit to decide working out. You can just work out and stay in shape. Many people think, Therapy is for so-called crazy people. Well, I may be a crazy person at times, but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Going to therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Leanne's in therapy. I know so many people in therapy that it means that you're just a a human that recognizes that you have emotions and you need to control them, not avoid them. And we've also been taught that mental health should be a part of, should not be a part of normal life. That's bullshit. That's wrong. We take care of our bodies by going to the gym. We eat right. You do all the things to make you feel right physically, meaning physically, like just try to stay in shape. Why wouldn't you take care of your brain? It's a muscle just like every other part of your body. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You can do it on the treadmill like I do. It's really nice to do therapy on your phone on the treadmill and you kill two birds with one stone. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours, give it a try and see why over 2 million people who have used BetterHelp Online Therapy use BetterHelp Online Therapy. And BurtCast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Burt. That's BetterHelp.com slash Burt. We ate a lot of McDonald's growing up, and, and I, f- I think I fine-tuned what I like. I remember the day I learned, I'm trying to be healthy. Tom and I were doing a weight loss challenge, and I took the bottom bun off the burgers yeah. and realized all the stuff you want, the ketchup, the cheese, yeah. all the flavors on that top bun, yeah, and nothing's on that bottom bun. Oh, so you do it to kind of remove some of the carbs. Yeah, move some of the carbs, and, th- and then I, it got away from me for a while because I was like, well, I normally was going to eat four burgers. Now that I'm doing this, I could eat eight, and then I was eating eight burgers. And That's I was, bananas. And getting fully sick. We went, Jim, yeah. when we were doing the drive-in tour, McDonald's that would, on the road, yeah. McDonald's that were by the drive-ins, because there oh, there's always a McDonald's yeah, by yeah, drive-in, yeah. would hit me up and say, hey, we're going to stay open extra late. Is it cool if we put your name on the on the thing to get your fans to come by after? 
or before to get dinner for the show and i'll be like yeah of course yeah and then they would hit us up and say and what would, what would you, you like oh wow and i remember one time saying here's 200 dollars, surprise me yeah and man that's we got we got so sick but that's where it's that's where we're we remain these little boys right we're like mcdonald's like i remember McDonald's. like my family we would have sunday dinner and i'd be like why don't we have mcdonald's for sunday and my mom would be like what kind of trash is this kid and i was like i want mcdonald's the five guys when you fly, fly lax to uh to uh dc yeah there's a five guys right at the gate right when the gate that you come off of and they would make they would put so much bacon on a sandwich it was almost oh like they my were gosh doing the it blt a, it's insane it was like they were it was almost like they were doing it on a prank show yeah now it's just like you felt like the, was there you know did, did they were they closing up and they were like just give them all the bacon do you have any great memories of bacon like like meaning like something that stands out like as a kid like i'll tell you one of mine yeah so i was i was in college and my dad woke me up early on a sunday i was getting ready to drive back to tallahassee sunday and he said why don't you come play golf with us me and his buddy don I said, okay i was hung over and we i was remember thinking if i could get to the 13th hole i can get a cocktail and then then i'll be fine yeah and we got there and there was a woman that made this is how good this memory is i can call my dad and he'll remember this exactly really jim this is i mean the best bacon memory i've ever had in my life this is when i learned about baking bacon on parchment wow she would put and this was kind of like a 13th hole kind of thing this is, this is five in the fucking morning five in the morning we're at the country club we're getting ready to play golf maybe the tee box is open at six my dad and his buddy are the first ones out he's not answering yeah. and and he says we should go in you want a little bacon before we go he's like we always sneak in and see if she'll give us a couple pieces of bacon and we went in and she had racks like almost like 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 big racks like 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 a like like old school computers my old school yeah, computers yeah, would yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. but it was all stacked with bacon on parchment yeah. paper and she said have as much as you want i just make it for the breakfast for the morning and she had made i mean i, I my memory you know memory is always bigger than it is yeah. i want to say thousands of pieces of bacon yeah and i ate so much bacon and it melted in my mouth i mean my mouth's yeah. watering it melted in my mouth yeah and she said, you always got to bake bacon and put it on parchment paper. It's wow. so much better that way. And this woman had made so much. And I fucked up bacon that morning that I didn't even need a cocktail. Oh, wow. I played a round of golf. And I remember coming in going, you know, bacon could cure COVID, too. They say marijuana does. Do you have any, do you have any Is bacon? Are people drinking urine, too? I would drink urine in a heartbeat. Rogan used to drink urine on morning radio. Really? Why? Yeah, I don't know. Because he, some, some fighter did it. It was good for your immune system. Oh, wow. And so Rogan did it all morning. I remember it was back in the day when the internet was like brand new. Right. And the, the first thing that comes up is Joe Rogan drinks his own piss. I mean, I look at Joe's Instagram and, he, you know, he's eating. <laughs> he eats a lot of meat and he, you know, like he, he'll he cheat here and there and have pasta and stuff like that. But that's, I, you know, I wish that I, you know, uh, had that kind of commitment to fitness. Do you know what I mean? Don't you? Or do you like, because he seems to be doing it right. Like he, he definitely has a good time. Yeah. He definitely eats healthy. He's like in his fifties, but like has the energy of a 20 year old. Yeah. He is. No, I'll say this fairly. I don't, I don't, I don't think his brain's right sometimes with fitness. Like what do you mean? I've competed against him about in stuff. Really? The way he sees things. It's like if you ask him, like, what do you think about when you work out? Like a lot of people, I mean, I, I, I I'm honestly punitive, but like he goes, oh, I think about rape, about people trying oh, to rape, really? rape my family, and then I just work harder. I go, if I don't get to the top of that mountain by the time I get up there, then they're gonna rape and kill my family, and then that's the way his brain works for oh, working. Oh wow! Like his, he's a very, he's a very intense guy, and he's in love with. He really is. Discipline for him makes him feel better yeah yeah so like certain i think depriving himself of certain things brings out that wolf in him so when he goes i'm just eating i'm eating fruit and meat this month that's all yeah. he's eating this month yeah yeah i i i i i i don't know i, I get diarrhea even hearing that that's i mean 
Yeah. I, you might mean, and by the way, I framework this, and there's a couple Joe stories that are like, that are like bonkers. Yeah. Like legit bonkers. Like when we did Sober October one year, we did a workout challenge. Yeah. We all, and I, I, like an idiot, decided to challenge, like really go after Joe. And I said, Joe, you run one mile, I run two. You run two miles, I run four. Run fucking 10 miles, I run 20. And I did. I, he, I remember I ran 20 miles in a day just wow. to, and this is at the very beginning. Yeah. And the next day, he went into his gym, and he set off the sprinkler in his gym. He spread off the fire alarm in his gym. He was working out so hard. He had so much wow. heat in there that it set off the fire alarm in his gym. That's how hard he worked out. To be, to be a human, to create that much heat that a fire alarm goes off is insane. That's one story. My favorite Rogan story is, <laughs> my favorite one is, he goes in he goes into a fucking polar plunge one time and, yeah. he, and he's never done a polar plunge and he does one minute and he has a hard time getting through a minute and and he faced he instagram lives it and people start calling him a bitch right because yeah the next day jim he goes into a polar plunge for 20 minutes and he lowers his core temperature as a human like two degrees for fucking a month wow <laughs> he he was he went in he get, he goes he goes you I I'll, I but I, I don't even think it was like him realizing people were saying shit about him online. I think it's the way his brain works. He goes, I had a hard time doing one minute. Fine, we do twenty. And he said wow. it. He was shivering in this, and he live streamed it, shivering in it, shivering, shaking in a polar plunge. But that's Joe's brain. It's like, you know, it's it's really interesting when you like. It's so hard to put in when people talk shit about joe with whatever's going on in the world and joe puts his two cents in I, a lot of times i just giggle and i go yeah i've known this guy for a while yeah he's like i can't believe that you're just meeting him now <laughs> right it is like it is strange because i hear that and in a way a lot of comedians i mean i'm not comparing myself to like that polar plunge i'm not interested i go but like back. but repeatedly going on stage doing stand-up at the beginning is a level of insanity like Easily. it doesn't make sense like most logical people would be like well this isn't working out i won't further humiliate myself but comedians are like no i'm gonna do this yeah there's i tasted a little bit of them liking me so i'm gonna continue so it is it is weird you describe joe with that and i'm like that is a lot of comedians. Like we've, well, it's, it's the thing that tracks with all of him, every part of him, and then a lot of part of us of like comics. That he is a real, a very curious. He's the most curious human being I've ever met in my entire life about everything. I'm I'm not an eighth as curious about anything as he is about like the weirdest things. But it's a, he's a great go to because you can always text him and go, "Hey man, uh, fucking." tent on car or any any yeah. anything anything he's yeah he's researched things i'm just like he's fully researched things that i yeah have no interest in yeah so there, it is so fascinating how but there's also like having done his show how he will say things on that show that he gets blowback for but he'll also say things on that show that he doesn't get caught like when i was on the show with him he was he was going on about how barack obama was the best president of his lifetime and i'm sitting there going well he's going to get in trouble for this from some of the people that are listening <laughs> yeah no the, in my twitter feed is all like jim gaffigan has trump derangement syndrome <laughs> you know what i mean it's like and so there is something fascinating about and I don't want, I mean it as a compliment because it's like they accept the the many complexities of Joe, which is like, I don't think people really appreciate that he's not, you know, like the people that uh, support Joe, they don't agree with everything he says. Oh, but that, but that, that is like, that is, I was thinking about that last night in a sauna, oddly enough, of all places. And I was like, you know, he supported Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Like he, people forget that he came out and publicly supported Bernie Sanders and everyone just wants to, I think what it happens is a Joe fan, 
and and I, I'm a I am a Joe fan. I'm I'm yeah. a, a friend of his, but I'm a fan. I've been a fan of the podcast. I always have been. I think they're a, a pretty open minded centrist, legit. Yeah, I think you have some that are far right, and I think you have some that are far left. Yeah. Not many, but I think you have some. Yeah, but I think they're a pretty open minded centrist who who is as curious as as he is. You have to be as curious he is, as he is based on the type of guest he has on. Like he has some guests where you're like. Like I, I remember listening to a full blown podcast he did. This is a long time ago. This would have gotten him a ton of shit. He did a podcast with a guy who said that AIDS isn't really a thing; it's a byproduct of of doing too many drugs. And he was like, in the gay community, they do a lot of drugs. That's all AIDS is: is doing too many drugs. This wow. was like back in the day. I did definitely did not agree with the guy. Yeah, and I, but I listened to fucking three hours of this guy talk. Yeah, because yeah. it's just kind of fucking fascinating. Yeah, and I think that's. Where I think Joe has kind of succeeded is, or, you know, and you, everyone could feel different ways about this, but I think the Rogan fan is a very curious person right, as, right. as is Joe. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it is just uh, amazing the whole world that we live in. And one of the things that I noticed in talking to him is, which I really loved, which is not rare for comedians, because I think comedians... Like, even you and Segura, there's stuff you disagree on, but there's the affection there, so it doesn't, you can get beyond it. So when I was talking to Joe and we were disagreeing on things, it wasn't kind of like, there was no shutdown of the relationship, which is, I know that sounds kind of Pollyanna, but like, there is, and I have some friends that I really love that like, you know, I don't agree with, and I'm also, you know, I've been kind of hesitant in some ways to reach out to them. I'll text them and I'll be like, I hope you guys are okay. But like, it's weird. We are in such a divided time that we do need these people that, you know, are like, you know what? You disagree with them. Doesn't mean you shouldn't talk to them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely. Whereas I think comedians, we have this all our friends, all our peers, whether they're male or female, there's stuff that you dislike about maybe an aspect of their act or what they stand for. But like you have a mutual respect for what they do. So it's like, I don't know. That's why I'm saying comedians should take over the world. I've, I, I'm, I think that we are the, I have a hard time talking to um, my regular friends who don't do comedy because sometimes I don't think they want to play devil's advocate or yes. angel's advocate like i i love i love when someone says something horrible i love to cheer them on in a group party to yeah, go yeah. i want to hear more of what you have to say when yeah. everyone's against them yeah like i i i love the i don't know i i feel like it i, I trust comics more from where their heart's coming it is interesting so like i mean obviously <laughs> we don't want to out our kids uh in any way but it's so interesting because my son my 16 year old son is a big contrarian and my 17 year old daughter is this very intelligent thoughtful person so it's like in the span of a year and a half there are these two kind of like there's part of me that's both of them do you know what i mean yeah. like and you know like i look at my siblings and it's like my brother Mike was always the one to say the worst thing that you should say <laughs> in a situation. That was his go-to. Yeah. And there's part of that in me. You know, there's part of that in every comic. It's like, you know, there's different levels of it. But, like, you say the thing that you're not supposed to say. And it's like, you need those people. Yeah. Oh. Now, have, have, you, have your kids ever pushed back on any material? Not. I mean, you know, it's like, it's weird because I've always kind of talked about them generally or I've used them as uh, a point. You know, like in in Comedy Master, I talk about my now 16-year-old son where I was trying to, you know, like parenting. I don't know what I'm doing. And so I was like, all right. So, and I'm seeing posters and I talk about this in Comedy Monsters, uh, Comedy Monster that I was like, all right, I'm going to have my older kids sell posters at my show. They'll make some money. They'll earn respons- learn responsibility. We'll do it. So I texted my 17-year-old daughter. I'm like, you want to sell posters after my show? Uh, I'll pay you. And she's like, great. Sounds good. And I texted my 16-year-old. And I'm like, do you want to sell posters after my show? I'll pay you. And he was like, uh, I don't need the money. And he doesn't have, he doesn't have a job. 
Do you know what I mean? He's just kind of like, you know what I mean? And, but like, that's a little bit. So it's just like, but by the way, he is, I'm not kidding. It's like, but we also know, like you and I are workhorses, right? My son is so fucking funny. So fucking funny. But, you know, comedy is not just about funny. Yeah. It's about like getting out there, gobbling up some humiliation, yeah. going back out. And so uh, I don't know what he's going to do, but like he's like, the, like some of it's unintentional. Like some of our humor is, yeah. you know, we're just kind of like, oops, I, I'm this guy. And so therefore it's funny. But like, he, like there's like, uh, you know, like we were driving and, uh, you know, I got all the kids in the car and we're going to do some work before they're going to do work before they get on their screens and so they get in the car they're going to do homework and my uh my wife's like and i'm like jack aren't you supposed to be doing work he goes i'm on a break like there's been nothing (laughs) there's nothing happened yet and i'm like that that kid is funny that's like in his bones like i remember my first job (laughs) this is like such maybe you'll identify with this so like all my siblings i'm the youngest all my siblings know about cars i know nothing yeah. It's just like I missed the gene about cars. And and so I had this car. I was living in Tampa. And I um was driving to work. And then just suddenly it stopped working. And the guy was like, you burn out the transmission. And so I remember calling my parents and saying, yeah, um, the guy said I burned out the transmission. My dad and mom are on the My dad's like, did you put oil in? And I'm like not not yet and he's like what the (laughs) he's like all my other sons and my daughters know about cars but this one knows nothing and so like like i remember vividly them laughing so hard at me and i was like all right and i remember saying like can you lend me some money and i was the sixth kid and they're like no It was just like one of those strange things. I was like, but you've helped me out my entire life. Why aren't you helping me? Because they're like, you have to learn from your failures. And I was like, well, that's kind of a dicky move. But it was a valuable lesson, right? Oh, why? But here's the thing is that how come you can't just take someone like your son, Jack? Like, and because the thing that makes them so funny is that they have they're not trying it is that that is the funniest I ever was. And it took me forever to get back yeah. there. And I don't even know if I'm there, but like, when you're I, still getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was yeah. a kid, I was fucking hilarious because it was, there was a straight look on my face. Yeah. And I would love to get, I remember, I remember my dad would tell me stories about me as a kid where I real, I know my dad really well and I know his personality really well and his character, like a, a comic character. Yeah. Of how he reacts to things. I remember in first grade, I dressed up as Gene Simmons for the talent show. My dad is not a guy that is comfortable wearing tights with no yeah. underwear and and yeah. my mom's chain belts around my and painting my face and no shirt and going getting ready to go to school. Going to school is that and being in a van with my dad. And my dad going, "Did you before we pull out? Do you want to grab some extra clothes?" And I'm like, "I'm good." <laughs> and just the look on his face. But then and then in a weird way, society kind of beats that out of you yeah and then you got to refine it yeah, as a yeah. comic and yeah. you're like why was i funny because there's so many comics that I, I i i was watching a bunch of comics the other day on for uh to fi- find a comic for something yeah and i was like oh they're not i just was very quickly like they're not there yet they're not there yet they're yeah, not there yeah, yet. yeah yeah and then you find the one guy that his voice is very you're like that's he's really close to who he is yeah yeah because isla has always my isla has always been hysterical not trying to be funny at all right 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 and, and you go and you go i wish you'd be a comic but you're it's gonna but they be- have to want it and they yeah. have to want it more than anything more than anything more than anything like it's not kind of and i try and tell that to my son i'm like and so yeah it's weird because i you know i sometimes I, you know, I've become that dad where like, I'm like, you're doing it. You know what I mean? Like I have to, I have to be like the bad cop. And so I, cause he would do nothing. 
So like <laughs> I, uh, you know, like for a Christmas present, of course he was like, I would like, uh, you know, like we're a Mac family. He's like, I would like a PC. And I'm like, how much is that? And I'm like, oh. and so I'm like, all right, then you're doing everything for me for the next two months. And he goes, all right. And so I'm like, you're opening every show in Florida. You're opening every show in Milwaukee. And uh, he was like, and he he wants to be a comedian, but yeah. he's also has he's also a teenager. He's like, I don't want to do anything. And so he walks out. He and he tells a couple of jokes. He's like, I don't want every every five minutes. He's like, I really don't want to do this. And I'm like, you're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it. And and now we're gonna do. He loves Ty Glass. So Ty Glass had opened uh, oh, yeah. on those shows. And so, um, he. So I'm doing a, a little bus tour. I mean, it's not a it's a week long bus tour during his spring break, and uh, he's gonna open with with me and Todd and and it's weird. It's like he did he did shows in Milwaukee, and because my wife's from Milwaukee and we've always been there, you know, like when he came out, they went crazy. And we're, when we're in oh Fort Lauderdale, he went out there, and it was. It was the Hard Rock Casino, and they're like, "Yeah, what? What's up?" Like they, they, you know, it was the sixteen-year-old kid. They're like, "I don't care," you know. I'm just, yeah. And that was like his first taste of like, "Oh, this isn't a layup." Yeah, it's really weird how I like, can't imagine being sixteen and feeling a theater in Milwaukee lose their shit. They lose their mind. They lose their mind because they saw him. I used to have my kids when they were younger. Um, go out and sing a song i mean I, I it was more genie than me but like <laughs> they would go out and sing a song and there'd be like a three-year-old and a 10-year-old it was all the gamut so like they a lot of these people and i used to do milwaukee every year at, at on new year's eve around that weekend and so they've known them but it's weird i don't know it's like so you're is the is lila is she the older one or is she, no, which one is she? it's isla she's the younger isla. one yeah. Yes, Isla is the younger one. Georgia, Georgia has more of a comic brain. She is a a very big contrarian, like, and she is the one that's put kibosh, she has put the kibosh on a couple bits that yeah. are that are like really good, just the really good juicy stuff that happens. Yeah, and then Georgia be like, I done go on stage, and you're like, oh fuck. But you gotta respect, <clears throat> you know, like my my oldest has that great comedic mind like i'll do i'll talk about a bit and she'll throw in a line and i'm like that's brilliant yeah it's but, but they've been around this all their life it's a and i'm like and i tell her i'm like you should be a comedy writer and she's like no i want to write music that's georgia wants to be a journalist yeah. and then i shit on journalism i yeah. was like i i'm i am the worst parent because i am everything that the 1950s dads were yeah except i'm in this new branded side of like i'm too like georgia said i want to go to school for journalism and i was like why don't we just teach you how to do uh, clickbait because that's all journalism is and yeah. she was like well it's not all that journalism is i was like no nah, it's just clickbait it's just uh uh dot 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 and then everyone just it's journalism's fucking pointless and then she was like well i i guess i'll quit the podcast i'm doing i was like what are you doing a podcast for it's like part of my journalism class Oh, and i was like what is it what are you why are you doing a podcast for journalism she goes it's part of journalism journalist oh, wow. and i went what wow. she's like you have a podcast you have two you have three you yeah. do journalism and i was like oh a podcast is journalism <laughs> i was like i just shit on it and she was like yeah i know it's been paying the bills so then you start going I, she georgia is isla is the 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 just a real weird ball of creativity yeah georgia's a a much much more astute kind of like eye on what's going on yeah. and she gets and she's a big she's a little bit of social justice warrior i wonder yeah. i wonder this is you don't have to talk about this but i wonder yeah. if she's had her first kiss yet because it's all through covid all the time that how old happened. is she senior in high, high school Bert, I, of course she has but but i but mean where? Where? like like well probably like in eighth grade no no when did you get when was your first kiss i guess i don't know sixth early. grade like what did you grow up in a mosque how did you no. not no i guess i guess <laughs> wait i guess i had my first kiss in seventh grade yeah yeah 
Yeah, no, they oh, definitely wait. did. Oh, shit. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah, it's, but it is so cruel what has been uh, taken from them. Yeah, it's just the regular, the regular stuff that you're supposed to yeah. do. All of a sudden, sharing a cigarette, which should happen in ninth grade. Yeah. Is all of a sudden, it's passing a virus. It's it's interesting, like the mask thing also, because there is that social justice thing also going on. It you know like the superficiality of a teenager like you know because they're just like <sighs> they're in heat yeah. right i think that diminishes it and probably makes them better people but do you think do you think social justiceism happens because like if if so if, if there was a mask mandate for me in high school right yeah. i don't think me or my friends if the school was like everyone's got to wear masks my my son never remembers a mask like it's like <laughs> I drop him off and, you know, like there's someone with a box of masks. He's like, oh, thanks. You know, like <laughs> we have like a billion of them. You know what I mean? It's like, but sorry. So what were you no, saying? No, so, but like, we would have never worn masks in high school. Like me and my friends, I'm sure that. And then the kid that was like, hey, guys, put your masks on. We would have just tortured him. His life yeah. would have been rough. Yeah, I don't. You know, it's weird because my kids also the. The concern of getting COVID was not about the sickness. It was about not being able to go to school. Like, they want to go to school. The, they, My kids today, I said. I, oh, Isla yeah, because they probably couldn't go for a little bit, right? No, they. everyone got it. Well, Isla, I mean, I shouldn't tell everyone's business, but Isla right. never got it. Right. Isla, Isla feels Because like, she has a different dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. She... <laughs> She, I mean, tried. she is African American, which is <laughs> weird because I know that your wife isn't. Uh, she but. tried to get it. I walked in and she had Georgia blowing in her mouth, and I was like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "I need it. I want it." She wanted she, it. She wanted it because everyone, no one got sick. No one got sick, sick. So she wanted it. Well, you know, the thing is, is also some of those tests, like to get, now, now I'm turning. Uh, it's like some of those tests don't pick it up. So yeah. I, I've been tested constantly. I before I flew out to LA, Netflix sent uh you know this super fancy test. You know, I mean I've been I'm sure when you were on your 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 tours, you yeah. have to test all the we time. We test all the time. And supposedly those tests don't pick it up. I will tell you this, I after having it, I had it before. Yeah. I definitely had it. And I did the same thing I did when I had it this time, I went, it's just a hangover. Yeah. Well, that's hard for you because you're always hungover. Yeah. And and I just go push <laughs> See, through it. I go yeah. get up, push through it. And yeah. I did. And I did last time. And I got I ended up getting a cough and the cough lasted for a while. And I'm and I remember going like I was like, I, yeah, I guess I've I guess that was a really bad hangover. It is weird, you know, and then I've heard other people say here we are just spreading this information. <laughs> but I heard that like um, sometimes when people tested positive for it, it wasn't COVID. It was the cold that they got. So like there's also some people think that you can have it more than once. What you had before was a cold. Right now we're in, the, we're in the don't shake hands with an AIDS patient era of COVID. Do you remember when that was the thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, cause I'm, we had, I had two uncles, um, uncles that had AIDS. Uh, oh that, that passed away of AIDS, and I remember the fear of hearing my another uncle talk about one of the uncles. The fear, yeah. And I remember getting out of the car, going, "Did I just get AIDS?" Because I was in the car with that guy who yeah. lived with that guy, like that kind of. And you know, it's crazy. To I think we're. I think we're at the. Uh, I think we're at the point where, um. Uh, blue states are going to be like, all right, what did these red states do? I think we're at that point. I think we, well, okay, well here, okay, because I've thought that, but then here's the other thing, is like we we were in. Um, of course, there could be another variant tomorrow that where we all die. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I keep cutting you off. <laughs> no, no, no. The I started looking at like wherever we were just touring. We were somewhere in the middle, like a uh, fucking middle of nowhere. Yeah, b b b not midland texas or not yeah. midland but grand prairie somewhere where yeah. it was like and i was like of, of course of course 
almost because of their their geography, they're almost destined to be a red state because they're not around anyone else. And so like they're not up each other's asses. So when they do see, see people like like it, especially with COVID going on, they're not like this. Whereas New York, everyone's like this. So in yeah. a weird way that like you've got to follow Fauci's rules, even more strict CDC's rules because you're on top of each other there yes. and in Boston. And and then you start thinking, is proximity what makes people red and blue? Like is, I don't know. You know what's, when 9-11 happened, which I know you were responsible for, <laughs> when 9-11 happened, I was working on a show in LA. Yeah. And I was back in New York. I was dating Jeannie at the time. And I remember flying back and forth. And every, you know, obviously right when 9-11 happened, uh, there was this massive amount of patriotism mm -hmm. in L.A. Everyone had uh, American flags on their cars. And then I went back to New York. People in New York, obviously it happened there. People were digesting it more. And then within a month, everyone in L.A. had taken their flags off their cars and were starting to say, like, you know, W seems like an idiot. But, like, people in New York, because they went through it, were like, you know, we got to get these people. Yeah. So it was, in my view, it was because L.A. didn't go. Th and by the way, obviously, there were threats in L.A. It was a different experience. It was. Where people in New York, like, the, the practical nature of, like, I can't go into my neighborhood without an I.D., made you realize the threat was far more likely i remember being on the subway and like them making an announcement and everyone running and me grabbing an old lady's hand because she was older and dragging her kind of like so she didn't die from like some what we thought could have been an anthrax attack so i do think i think it's interesting because there is that geography thing but i also think that also like in some town like you know and i'm just some some uh you know town like say that has a hundred thousand people that's far away from a city center if they if they don't know anyone that had covid they're more susceptible to be told to believe the idea that it's not real yeah that it's just a cold yes well i i felt you know i felt a responsibility so because people would call up when i got it and they're like they're like because i am what you'd argue high high risk i'm partying all the time oh, yeah. I'm, not sleeping, I eat like shit, I'm overweight, I, my blood pressure's up. Right. And then people will go, so how was it? And I, I felt a responsibility to be like, I can't tell you it was okay. Cause, because I felt guilty going, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, what, it, it wasn't that bad. So then once you say it wasn't that bad, all of a sudden, it's just a cold to everyone. And then someone's like, because Bert said it was just a cold, yeah. I went out <laughs> yeah, and got it, now I can't walk. Yeah. Yeah, and there and are so many scary things like that. Long COVID stuff is scary. I'm, I, I'm, I, I still to this day. I mean, I haven't drank yet, and I'm, I'm working out. I'm trying to be healthy. I think it kind of scared me. I mean, into, you worked like, out this morning, like yeah. that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I worked out during COVID. Like I, I was still, yeah, like going like I just. And did you guys live here? Or did you move prior? We moved so. We bought this house right before COVID hit in November, right before COVID was in January, yeah. in November, and then started renovating it right when COVID, in March, when COVID hit, and then had to, and then I threw a panic because I was like, I was like, this is a fucking waste of money. This is, I just, I, I started thinking, what well, this is what ego gets you, that yeah, yeah, you yeah. want something bigger, you want something nicer, and then the universe tells you you should need to stay where in your place in your place yeah and so we yeah. stayed in that in our other house for like a full almost two years almost before we moved into here yeah. and then but we would but we had this place so we th this house represents covid to me because we'd go into the backyard when it was another house and we'd right. sit in the backyard because it was space we had our yeah, dogs yeah. back here we'd have outdoor parties because you could have people here yeah and so like this house i was sitting in the backyard the the morning after i tested positive and i was like i was like i've been in this backyard waiting for this to happen for two fucking years yeah. and i was like finally it's here and i'm not i don't i, f I feel pretty good yeah and i was like god i mean i wish i've the anticipation like my sister both my sisters have been anticipating getting covid yeah for so long that you start going like that you re that i you know there's no way it was going to punch itself out that first 
that was never going to happen, right? You just don't want to be the last person to die of COVID. The last person? It's like, oh, we uh, we figured out a cure. What? <laughs> you don't. Oh, right when I got it, they started going. They got COVID pills. All you they have to take. do is all you have to do is eat strawberries. What? What? <laughs> there is like. It is like an M. Night Shyamalan movie where we're going to find out like, oh, really? Oh, you know, like if you took Prozac, you'd be fine. <laughs> but we don't know. That's it's weird how like. I mean, thank God there's people interested in science because I'm not. I couldn't. But it's like, I mean, and when my wife was sick, you just appreciate those science nerds. You're like, thank you for being interested in stuff i can't even begin to understand well you were the one you were the first person that because because of genie's past medical history yeah to flash my eyes to like uh uh, uh people that, that are immune deficient or, or uh, yes yeah or co- compromised immune systems yeah. and i was like oh fuck yeah like, i remember i remember having that conversation with you like 19 months ago and going like oh yeah you do oh shit that's why yeah that's yeah, why yeah. you can't and then to think that your kids not only are, have to operate in New York City, yeah, but then have that in the back of their head, like I definitely don't want to kill my mom. And then, yeah, and then there's, and then, but it's like again, it's like obviously our childhoods are so different from our own children, but what they're experiencing. But Ooh. to have this pandemic laid on a teenager, it's brutal it stinks you don't well, i mean i wonder i wonder how many lives it saved i mean because oh, drinking yeah. and driving it's a funny drug overdose drunk drive i almost died in a drunk driving accident i wasn't driving but like the guy was we were both drunk and he went right into a car when high school yeah uh my dad scared the fuck out of me about drinking i did drink and drive a couple times yeah but um my dad uh picked up a guy one of my buddies who was drink got in trouble with the law and ended up going to jail and my dad had to pick him up that morning because his parents wouldn't pick him up they were livid my dad was a lawyer but he was also his baseball let coach. me ask you so maybe you've talked about this so like what? i always imagine this is what i imagine is your dad because i've seen photos of you and you're close and yeah. you know on social media and stuff like that i always imagine what's your dad's name albert so al albert kreischer is like I have a son, my son Bert, and then your son turns into Bert Kreischer the machine, <laughs> and your 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 dad's like, oh, like like there was headaches where he was probably and, and as a father, I'm like the amount of anxiety that he must have felt, and now you're this enormous success where he's got to be like I can't believe like it's like from Albert's perspective he's like I can't believe. <laughs> i thought for sure that i'd be fishing him out of a dike you know <laughs> it's like and my son is now the machine that is like it's like it's like he probably was like bert you can't live this way and you're like trust me i can do it and he's like i you know i just i don't you know it's not gonna and and you were right he said he has said uh, a number of times recently, he's like, I mean, I just don't know what to say. Like, <laughs> Pete, you know, because he worked, you know, I think the frustrating thing for him, he would never say this, but he, I know he has said this, is that he, he worked for a very hard time to make sure that his name meant something in Tampa. About, as a lawyer. As a yeah. lawyer. As a yeah. lawyer. Yeah. As you can trust, Al yeah. Christ is going to give you, yeah. he's going to be fair. Yeah. He was very, he, my dad's a very generous guy. Yeah. And but he's very honest and he's very upfront and like there's certain things yeah. qualities that my dad holds very precious and then he said the other day he goes you don't understand I, I i i go into a place i go into Publix, and the guy says to me are you related to bert kreischer yeah and he goes you know and i get excited then i go what does he know bert kreischer as <laughs> like yeah, he goes yeah. are you related to bert and then he's like well all the things you've done i don't know which one he saw yeah. Oh, um, that's so funny. Yeah, he's uh he is because it's not just our children, it's our relatives. Oh, right. Like my my sister-in-law, remember she told me she went into a grocery store. And my brother, who she's married to, is a pretty successful guy. He's funny too, and all this. And she gave the credit card, and the lady was like, Do you know Jim Gaff? Are you related to Jim Gaffigan? And she's just like, you know, I, 
I you, didn't sign up for this. So, you, so you know what's interesting is I said to, for me it applies because my mom enjoys it. My mom enjoys yeah. if if someone recognizes our names together. My mom loves it. My mom yeah. loves it. My dad, I think my dad enjoys it, but he also he's a very close to the vest guy. He not he doesn't share a lot like. But what's interesting he's is... He's normal. He's a regular person. He's, he's a normal. regular person. He's not Bert-like. <laughs> My daughter, when she was applying to colleges, um, the one that I wanted her to go to, she did immediately did not want to go to. And as we walked around that campus, I got recognized a bunch. And that that sold the fact that she didn't want to go to school there. Wow. And she was like, I'm, yeah, I'm... I'm you good. went to Florida State. I went to Florida right? State. It was the fucking greatest experience of my life. <laughs> and so um <laughs> the um so th- how many schools did you tour with your daughter? Obviously you don't want to discuss that one. I was only allowed to see that one cuz that one ruined it. And oh, so and this, then it was like, no, you're not going. But she didn't say that cuz she didn't want to say that hurt my yeah. feelings. I said to Leanne, I was like, "Why don't you guys go look yeah, at yeah, other yeah. schools?" Yeah. I was like, "I think I fuck it up." Yeah, yeah. And because I, I show up at a college and then the one we went to i was it was like i mean it was happening every 10 feet right and once it happens once all of a sudden it explodes and then yeah yeah and, she, and, it, and it and it and i really wanted her to go to school there yeah um the second the one she went to with leanne the first one she fell in love with the college she is it big it. small uh i won't i, I won't yeah, even yeah. share any of that i'll tell yeah. you what it is no. uh, but but just Could edit it out. it out yeah it's, Oh wow! And okay. so she fell in love with it. Oh right. Then I got hit up by same school. Someone at the someone in the you know football program hit me up and was like, "Hey man, you're gonna be dot dot dot. Why don't you come by?" And I was like, "That's something I should probably run by Georgia first. And so I yeah. just said to Georgia, "You know, hey, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be around there." And I was thinking I was gonna. She's like, "Nope." Life is fragile. I think of that sometimes when I look at my family and I think, and I realize one day I'll just be a picture on a mantle. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a dark thought. It's dark, man. It's a dark thought. It's the truth though. And then you wonder, are they going to be taken care of financially? Does it, it makes sense why people get life insurance. Obviously. Especially term coverage, which is surprisingly affordable. Why not pay a bit each month to protect the ones you love? If you're not asking yourself that question, and I know that it's a dark question, but it's one that you should ask. If you're not asking yourself that question, choose Ladder. I love Ladder because they're straightforward, and I know I'm receiving quality service. Ladder is 100% digital. No doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less. You just need a few minutes on a phone or a laptop. Apply. Ladder's smart algorithm works in real time, so you'll find instantly if you are approved. If you prefer to talk to a person, their team of licensed agents doesn't work on commission, so they'll help you and not upsell you. No hidden fees, canceled any time. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. And Ladder policies are issued by insurers with long, proven histories of paying claims. They are rated A and A plus by AM Best. Finally. Since life insurance costs more as you age, now is the time to cross it off your list. So go to ladderlife.com slash Burt today to see if you're instantly approved. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash Burt. Ladderlife.com slash Burt. When it comes to thinning hair, you no longer have to choose between natural remedies and those that work. There is a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness without drugs or prescriptions. Nutrafol. I just got my box shipped three packages shipped to me the other day. I just started them today. And I love, here's why I love it is because as I read all the things I needed to read, everything seemed natural. Everything seemed healthy. Everything seemed like it was just going to benefit me from an all around sense as I read all the stuff. Do you know that there are five roots of causes? of thinning hair. Nutrafol is the hair, su- hair supplement that goes beyond genetics to target stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, and environmental factors that may be impacting your hair. Nutrafol is clinically shown to improve hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage without compromise. 21 potent natural ingredients support sex drive, better sleep, and less stress too. That's what I read is that 
with Nutrafol, you will also be getting better sleep. Shut the fuck up. A full head of hair on a pillow? In clinical studies, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 1,500 top doctors. You can grow thicker, healthier hair, and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code BERTCAST to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, and the promo code's BERTCAST. Yeah, you got to consider this stuff. And it stinks because I would love to be a big supporter of where my daughter goes to school. I I watched my dad do it. My dad was like, you're going to Florida State? Call me up. You see the Florida State game? My dad would wear Florida State gear. Yeah, yeah, He got really into Florida State. My dad went to Villanova. Did he? So did he drive up to football games and everything? uh, He did. A couple times he'd come up and it was a big deal. So your dad, is is he from the Northeast? He grew up in Levittown. He was the Oh, Long Island. Yeah. First oh, generation wow. of uh, the Levittown people. Well, first, all those people that came so back Kreischer, from World War II. So, what is Kreischer? Is that German or it's something? German? It's the t- guy that yells the most in the town. Really? Yeah, from Baden Baden. I went and pra- tracked my ham- family history when I was like 22 back oh, in that's Germany. So interesting. Yeah. Very anti Semitic you are. <laughs> oh, my my oh. Uh, secret time. My, my grandfather, uh, my, 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 I may be fucking this up. Right when I moved to New York, my dad got my grandfather's diary from World War II. Wow. My dad has his actual so diary. Your from World grandfather, War II. your grandfather was like Sprechen sei Deutsch? No, no, no. My grandfather stormed the beaches of Normandy okay. or Omaha Beach, I think. Um uh and then went in and liberated concentration camps. Oh, right. And ran into relatives working at the concentration camps. Are you? Oh my God! And by the way, by the way, that is like. I mean, my dad's more than welcome to say that that's not accurate. Because my dad's like, you got an active imagination, buddy. Yeah. But yeah. one of the things that kind of fucked either him or his cousin or his like p- people that in the states was yeah. going in and seeing actual German family members, people that would they would have been related to it had they lived in wow. New York or even from the same town or yeah. region. Yeah. And it and it really that is what fucked them up the most is that they were realized had had we not moved i'd be on this team yeah yeah i did that finding your roots thing with did you, you do it on, on tv that. yeah you did you it on tv do, right you gotta do that you gotta you gotta get on that it is so fascinating really so it's like because i was like uh you know like there's stories that we hear about our family and then you're like what if it's true but like both both sides of my family essentially just running from uh you know nativist kind of trying to kill catholic people the, really? on both sides so you wait, know. where's your family from uh ireland on both sides and um and then uh my mother's from iowa and my dad's from springfield illinois and um but like my dad's side coal miners and my mom's side they had like a a store they they lived in Maine and then they opened a store out which was the most furthest west people were I guess besides California which was Iowa it's so weird right that's what's fascinating is Chrysler's a big name in Staten Island it is yeah it's like the all the bricks say Chrysler on them oh wow all the bricks apparently there was like and there's a big murder yeah uh, no there I had a relative that murdered somebody really well, supposedly, they're not sure if he might have been framed. Like, there were these, there's this group called the Molly McGuire. It's so weird because, like, I have this friend. We have this friend. They also have five kids. And she's, her parents are from Ireland. And her dad did a big, um, he's a writer, and he wrote a book about the Molly Maguires. And there was, and I said, you know, like my family were coal miners. And uh, he was like, maybe you're p- part of the Molly Maguire's. And I'm like, I'm sure not. And I had a relative that was kind of ran in that crowd. What were the Molly Maguire's? They were like these, um, you know, union buster. I mean, uh, like they were trying to form a union, but like they were the Irish Catholics were oppressed and they kind of rose up a little bit. Is that what it's, what does it say? So they were, uh, 
It's a movie. Yeah. I should know more about it. Yeah. So, but like in Pennsylvania. Is that Sean stuff. Connery? Yeah, I think that is. But like, did you ever see Madawan? No. Oh my God, that's a great movie. John Sales. It's a great movie. What is it? It's about it's about union stuff and but I think that one's in West Virginia, but it has just um you know, like people, you know, in the eighteen hundreds, they you know, like the coal mines, you would you'd be indentured servants essentially. They'd be like, Oh, you want to work in the coal mine? Hey, we'll give you <laughs> housing. It's five bucks. And they're like, Oh, you can't work today? All right, so you owe us five bucks. And so then you never get out of this web. Do you think so like okay? This is this question is going to come out the right way. I'm trying to make it the right question. So, like, you are a you are a successful man in in this century. Yes. And I'm obsessed. I think we're both interested in history. Yeah. Do you think you would have been a successful man in all centuries? I don't think so. How I do you don't think? think so. How do you think you would have, like, first your family's first generation that came to America? Yeah. Do you think you could have done as good as your great great grandfather? Yeah. Well, like my my grandfather made dentures, and I remember thinking that's yikes. Yeah. But when I did that finding your roots thing, they were like that was a big thing because he wor- he wasn't working in a coal mine, so he got himself out of the coal mine. So wow. he was the success story. But to answer your questions, I don't know. I'm not handy. I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm kind of resourceful, but I, you know, it's like, I, I'm not that bright. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I'm not like, uh, maybe if I owned a store, I could survive, but like, I don't know. Like, even like when you see like them fighting wars and stuff like that, yeah. I, I feel like I'd be killed immediately. Well, I keep looking at history going i i'd be that guy like i like like i I was watching them uh they were people in this tank thing they were like guys that were trying to get into tanks yeah guys that were like to drive tanks and 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 then the guys that like to be the gunners and then the guys like to be and i was like in my head i'm like oh i'd want to be in a tank but then i was like do i have the skill set to be in a tank am i a guy that could be in a tank i I don't think i could unlike tight spaces and then i was like okay so wait who would i be and then you start and then you flip it you go okay Let's say I was a German. I would have been a German. Yeah. Would I been? Would I be the good guy that's like, hey, what we're doing here is wrong? Or would I just be like, hey, man, they're freeing up real estate. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, well, I think that, I think the spirit of a comedian is kind of contrarian. Yeah. Like, pretty much universal. So I think that you know like the you know like look we've done well but we didn't go into stand up because we want to make a decent living like when we started it was you know it, you might as well go into phonograph repairmen it's I like, didn't think I didn't think you could I actually didn't know you could make a living yeah you and you were the fir- and I'm I'm being dead serious when I say yeah. you I'm not saying that because you're in this room you were the first person that I knew that could make a living from stand up because at the time when I started, I started in 1998 when I was 26 years old. So when it, 1998, in November of 1998, I started working the door, and everyone just worked New York. No one worked the road. Maybe you worked colleges, yeah. But you were the first person that I saw kind of step out of New York and do different things, like like if it, it mostly commercials. Yeah, yeah. And I remember Dimitri Martin saying like like breaking down what you got for a commercial what you actually got for a commercial he's like man if you can be like jim jim gaffigan's though he's doing it the right way and you were the first one to get out of new york and do stand up i didn't know you could make a living doing it yeah (laughs) yeah no it is weird and i feel like there were obviously people that were touring around but like yeah i didn't know that there was an you know that you could make a living doing club like no one was doing theaters no and uh the the club thing was it's weird because back then it's like if you were on conan you could sell out a weekend at the dc improv and then it 
it's changed so much. So like when comedians say like, what did you do? I'm like, it's, it doesn't apply now. You know, it's like, do you know, they're not even doing weekends anymore for comics. They're doing one night. So as a comic, you'll do, wow. Yeah. You'll do Thursday. It, it actually makes more sense for the clubs. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense for the comics. So but then so, it's so a lot it, more traveling. Yeah. So you're doing Thursday in DC. Maybe you'll do Friday in Richmond and then do, wow. Yeah. And, or Friday, Saturday. if you're big, you can do, if you're, if you're big, you can do, this is what was exp- being explained yeah. to me by the clubs. If you're big, you do Friday, Saturday, right? And you yeah, try to yeah, sell those yeah. out. And then they'll give Thursday to like, say a YouTube star and right. Sunday to someone else. Oh, wow. But I've been looking at guys doing like, you know, Thursday here, Friday here, Saturday here and touring. And, and I think they're getting a better deal at the door. Right, right, right. And uh, you know what's weird also is I think now people only go to comedy clubs once every 18 months. Whereas, like, I remember the DC Improv, I, you know, wasn't always the case, but uh, like the DC Improv, the Tempe Improv, Zanies in Chicago. Like, Zanies in Chicago, I think I would go there four times a year. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you mean as a comic or as an yeah. audience member? As a comic. Oh, yeah. I, 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 did, I did every club in quarters. Yes. Yeah. And now that's not the case now i do every club once every 18 months yeah like i remember doing a uh corporate and i had to the day before i had to run through different bits and the ceo was like i like that joke that that let's do that joke and it was just like it would but it was, at the time it was so much money yeah and i was like all right and then think, yeah it was a lot of money and i remember going like it's worth it yeah and then you know like also occasionally people would be like do you perform at weddings and i'm like no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ruin your wedding <laughs> do you know what i mean i it's it's crazy too because i i couldn't do colleges <clears throat> i never felt like i could do colleges well colleges have sh- changed so much in my career it used to be they were universally wasted yeah and like I did a college where I was picked up at the airport, did the college, was heckled by someone in the audience, and I realized it was the person who not only booked me for the show but picked me up from the airport. And that's not my. And I was like, well, "Why were you doing that?" He was like, and then the next morning he was like all hungover, and he's like, "Sorry." <laughs> and I was like, what? and now I mean I haven't done a college in a while, but. Even when I did, I remember I did Notre Dame a bunch of years ago, and it was, you know, like I grew up in Indiana, and Notre Dame was a party school. I mean, it was a great school, but, like, people used to, you know, they'd have some cocktails. And uh, it was outside. It was not freshman week, but they were all sober. And I was like, wow, that's fascinating. They're all sober. Oh. I did Florida State. They were fucking wasted. They were wasted. They were wasted. That's when I saw that. I saw that online, right? That was one of the, yeah, with the spear. Yeah. That was one of the greatest experiences of my entire fucking life. If, if you told me I had to, I had to retire after that show, I would have been like, that's the show you go out on. That was like, it was like, it was, it, it was, it was full circle of a career and a life, meaning, to leave Florida State and to be persona non grata because of that Rolling Stone article. Yeah. And then, then to come home and have them, they literally rolled out the red carpet. They had a red carpet into the Civic Center with welcome home, birdie boy, everywhere. Wow. <clears throat> and then people in their dorms sticking their head out the windows. Just, I mean, kids just going, welcome home, birdie boy. It was, I don't make me cry. Wow. It was the greatest experience of my life. Where That's I, the ending scene of the movie. <clears throat> just uh right. and getting canceled with the spear yeah I just, I, I, just, <laughs> it was like i saw that online i'm like I, I guess you can do that i guess i the redskins changed their name but i'm birds doing that okay i'm like uh i'm like when a puerto rican guy says the n-word <laughs> but it is weird how um it's gonna be interesting so like that i mean that is it is weird how like certain sports teams like cleveland guardians yeah but like florida state's not so what florida state did this is what i am led to understand 
led to believe and i know this to be a tad bit true based on because i did the holly i did the hollywood improv hollywood uh theater the same one you, oh yeah yeah the that, hard rock the hard rock i did the hard yeah, rock yeah. the next weekend um very early on into the process florida state went to the seminole tribe oh. and asked for permission oh that's smart i i by the way i could be wrong no but, no but, but, but like but i'm almost 100 percent certain that they went to the seminole tribe and said how, how do we make this right because it is the florida state seminoles yeah oh it's it's an, a it's legit not like tribe. it's not like indians or derogatory term yeah. for native americans it's an actual tribe that is from that area yeah and so that andrew jackson kicked out right, right? <laughs> dude well, i mean that's something amazing about history is like people have been nasty and mean for a long time you know so funny yo yeah, oh, oh. I'll, I'll finish that up yeah. and then i'll tell you the rest yeah. so when i went to hollywood the uh members of the osceola mem- members of the tribe asked to come backstage this is what we're not doing meet and greets yeah. but you definitely don't roll into a yeah to reservation and deny anyone access yeah. to come backstage who it's their reservation yeah and a lot of them that came back were like hey we saw that saw the spear thing that was fucking amazing so there but, were but a lot of them a lot of them went to florida state you know so so it's it's very incestuous and like they went to florida state and they're just i don't mean this disrespectfully but they're also florida kids you know like kids that yeah. grew up in florida also and florida is yeah. so diverse that Yes, they are Seminole Indians, but they also grew up in Florida and then went to Florida State. And so, yeah. Um, but I even I joked. I was like, I was like, yeah, I was worried I was going to get canceled. And they're like, oh, it's one of the coolest things I ever saw. I was like, oh. it is. It is so fascinating because it is. It's really not black or white. It's very blurry. It's it's like you know when, I mean? it's like when you saw when you. I'm not even joking when I said this. When you see Puerto Rican guys in New York saying the N word, or you see Mexican guys saying the N word, and you're like, I don't think you're allowed to say that but i'm not i'm not the one that's allowed to call you on it yeah and then yeah. and then i remember watching takashi 69 on the breakfast club charlemagne asked him if he, about saying the m word and i guess he just said it's what i do stop me it technically was his answer yeah and no yeah. one was going to stop him and so you know it's it's a it is a weird gray area where maybe they'll stop the tomahawk chant cuz i would this that I mean that i did that and then the next day trump did it and i was like he did uh, the next day so women so when you posted that um obviously people that love you supported you but like how much backslash so interesting but i also think you know i i also think it's the same thing with like when we go back to that rogan fan statement is i i think i'm i've at least surrounded myself with fans that are that can acknowledge him hey and <laughs> it's a little dicey but hey it was pretty cool you know like yeah and it's it's also one of those things where you don't present yourself as i'm mr woke i'm right? definitely not mr woke so it's like i i i, I don't understand like because when it happened i was like i mean the the, the school gave me the spear and it's yeah. I, I, it's in that room it's it's got my name engraved on it oh, cool. it's like it's and and my representation with that spear i de- mine was i you know growing up in t- florida you never had civic pride you never really gave a fuck about florida we had the bucks and that was it and they were horrible and and we didn't have hills everything looked like it was just brand new everything had mulch on it like like yeah. nothing was like you ne- you you never were proud of come like be- living in florida was just like kind of like oh, yeah i live in florida it's not california but it's florida like our, we didn't have waves in our oceans. Our our oceans were warm. Like you yeah. couldn't swim in our lakes. There's alligators in them. Yeah, it's just yeah. nothing was like. So I had, I had no sense of civic pride. A kid from Boston or New York that like grew up around the Nets or you know yeah. or the Knicks. And so when I went to Tallahassee, my dad. I remember my dad going like, "Dude, buddy, this is gonna be such a big." I mean, you have no idea. Like he remember saying a few things to me. He's like, "The football games. You're gonna get to see what a college football game is." I had no frame of reference for that. Yeah. And he was like, and you, you, you can become whoever you want to be. Like when you go to college, you can change the things you don't like about who you were in co- high school. You can be whoever you want to be. And I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't get it. And then I, I went to the first football game. Still didn't get it. I don't think I put on 
school colors. I just went to a football game with my, I was a pledge with my fraternity. Yeah. And, uh, and I, they, I remember they were putting stripes on everyone's faces. And I was like, I was like, in my head, this is crazy. But I was like, I don't want to even unevenly tan. Like, and that was the way my brain worked. You're always vanity. Yeah. Yeah. And when Chief Osceola came out on the horse and threw the spear in the center of the, of the thing, and you hear what are 50,000 people explode, the spear's on fire. He's riding bareback. He goes out in the middle, rears back on the horse, and the place is going fucking crazy. And he spikes the, th- the spear, and it's on fire. I started sobbing, crying, and I did. I was not a guy who cried. I'm a freshman. I'm 18 years old, and I started sobbing, crying. It was the first time I ever felt a connection with a community ever in my life. I'd never had that before. And all of a sudden, I feel like I am one of these 50,000 people that all want this one. And by the way, we had a great fucking team that year. For the whole seven years I was there, we had great teams. Wait, wait, seven years? Yeah, I was in college for a while. And so, so, <laughs> so. And did you pay or did your dad pay? Was, was your dad 50 like. 50 bucks a class. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 56 bucks a class. Yeah. So, but I, I felt a connection. So when they. And 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 I I were t- it's close to a decade, right? You were almost yeah. there. I was there you, longer than grunge music was around. You didn't you didn't get a graduate degree. This is all <laughs> no. undergrad. All undergrad. All undergrad. So I started wearing sunglasses to those games because I, I I wore sunglasses for the rest of my because every time they spiked that spear and I meant to I had I was there before the spear went in. I saw that spear every single home game I went to. I saw that spear go in and I would sob cry because it was the first. It it was my connection with the community. When they came up to me, well, first of all, they came up to me in the, at the at the show, and they're like, "We want to give you a present, Jim." I thought I was getting a doctorate. I thought they were going to give me a doctorate. <laughs> the guy, Not an honorary <laughs> degree, a doctorate. Okay. So I was. Like, I thought they were going to make me president of this school. <laughs> I thought they were going to make me doctor machine. Yeah. So, oh, that's so, amazing. And I was like, "Oh, this is really cool." And so I got ready to accept a cap and gown. Like yeah, I was yeah. like. I was like, oh, I better probably better if I don't have a shirt on. And and they were like, well, we just want to give you something before the show. When they gave me that spear, I started sobbing, crying, wow. and I couldn't control it. And I was like, you don't understand how much. It and means what to were me. they? Were they like, yikes? Uh, <laughs> They're like, well, we didn't expect this. this. <laughs> and and so I told them, I was like, I'm I'm bringing this out at the end of the show. And they're like, of course, of course. Wow. And so in a weird way, I I kind of looked at it like, definitely not that I was like impervious to getting in trouble but in my head i was like this is worth it for me because it was such a to leave that school in in disarray where they didn't want me there anymore and i'd been overstayed my welcome and i tarnished the name of the community and i tarnished the school and and teachers didn't like me and and students were were kind of like uh you know why don't you just move on with your life Right. To be able to come back and then be given that spear and then go out in and, front of and, and you to say, get on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> it is so fascinating, right? Uh, what a journey. Oh, it's I I can't I know I'm gonna be bummed when I die. Well, you're not gonna be aware of it. I, that's what kills me. Right. I know I kind of want to have for my 50th birthday, I was thinking about having a mock funeral where that's interesting. I'd lay in the casket and people come up and say what I meant to them. And so I get to experience my That's funeral. That's not narcissistic at all. <laughs> I, for, <laughs> and just, and then have so people. let me, let me, let's talk about like, how often do you argue with your wife or does she, <laughs> does she kind of like, she knew what she was getting into, right? She argues, you know, she does this thing now. She's the adult, right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, she's similar to Jeannie. She kind of runs the show. Oh yeah, and but, you know, you you obviously, you know that a lot of things are great because of you. Uh, every, yeah, everything's every, everyone's everyone's uh everyone's ship sails because I because yes. I, I I'm because I'm paying the bills. Yeah. So like I, the the whole the idea that you would have problems with the way that we pay for the ships sometimes yeah kind of blows me away. I tried to write a joke today. I I, I don't. We have had a thing where it's like right before we have sex, she starts talking to me and I'm I'm like, now's not when I want to talk. Right. And I well, the joke I wanted to yeah. write was I go, you're like a prize fighter 
trying to whisper to me in the ring where you go like come here i want to tell you a secret and i was like well once you get in tight you can punch me and i go that's what you're doing to me you're bringing me in close but you're just hammering me yeah and like you're vulnerable yeah and a lot of it is a lot of it is i'm not like uh today the conversation was say something doesn't happen for one of your kids right like uh like uh hey um uh jack didn't get on the basketball team and yeah. as a dad my heart breaks because yeah. as for if, when it's my kid i go well i don't yeah. this isn't stuff i want to hear i don't this yeah. isn't good news yeah yeah i don't want to hear the good news <laughs> yeah just tell me the good news and yeah. she goes well i'm just telling you the bad news i go just so you know this is how i react and she goes well just so you know i can't keep it all in myself yeah no it is really it's it's i mean it's it's a lot to process and it's like it's this it's it's kind of like you're in this partnership and there's like and we're traveling and the, it's communication is difficult they're yeah. doing incredible things you, you know it looks like we're living in a constant party but they also inherently know that we're working our asses off i sometimes wonder if she thinks i like but be- some of that is your brand is yeah. that it's a kind but anyone who has the same occupation knows that like there's a f- and the people that work with you are like i'm sure they're like oh my god it's brutal like like i i jokingly said it's like i did a podcast like my my family is you know i think my 12 year old tested positive so like the older ones had to quarantine at home and it's brutal and you know like you can look at me like being in la talking to friends doing press it's like it is nice but it is also it's i got you know i had to get up at like seven in the morning today so i could do press yeah it's not it's not like i'm not working but it is it's fun oh yeah you know what it, i mean oh i i said today we we're talking about touring and i go it's easier for me sometimes when you send me out on a wednesday i mean bring me home in two weeks on a sunday because then I can just, I don't have to come home. But I didn't mean that shitty. But I was like, if I come home for two days, then I don't, my re-entry is kind of fucked up. Like, I'm not there for everybody. Yeah, no, well, you also, you're on this strange schedule. Yeah. And there's, it's it's weird. You know, like, I won't out this comedian. But, like, there's this comedian who told me that when he would do, if he, and he wouldn't even go out or anything. He would do his shows and he would, if there was a show on Saturday, he would not come back on Sunday. He would come back on Monday. And I'm like, that's insane. I mean, yeah. obviously, well, he doesn't have kids, but like in his relationship, he needed that downtime because when you go back, you're going back into the show. Yeah. And he, oh, he would do these shows. It. It's like, and traveling you know you'd have to get up and you're going cross country and you burn a day and you land you land and the show is going on it's not kind of like and believe me my wife is very supportive she's like if you need to nap i know you just flew in but like the show goes on i used to have a joke this is 17 years ago i had a joke about tom hanks about going i can't imagine being tom hanks coming home from a movie coming home where you're the star and sitting down for breakfast that first day and they're like uh chet had a basketball game he's like fucking basketball we're talking about basketball i was stranded on an island i lost 47 pounds <laughs> yeah i mean i'm a fuck are you being okay how was your basketball game like i remember going like as a joke to my buddy croy like going how that was you know like what's it got to be like being tom you know and i'm not definitely not tom hanks but there have been times where i come home and all of a sudden the the regular life shit shows up you're like hold on i was at the rocket mortgage arena like i walked out where lebron like does anyone want to talk about my life for a second no well it's also but like obviously there is when it's your kid (laughs) you are interested in the basketball game it's like we have to sometimes (laughs) but like there is you know i uh, you know it's just the 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 glamour and by the way it's you know it's like what my wife has to deal with it's insane oh i couldn't so like i couldn't flip the jobs no no and i by the way for a while there i was doing some of it you know and it's like it's hard it's hard 
And I've been working on this new material about how, like, that's why dads on vacations look like they lost a bet. <laughs> and moms seem so happy because they know that the dad is suffering. <laughs> They're like, the mom knows this is you, even though we're here. Yeah. You know how hard you can appreciate how hard I have it. <laughs> that's why the mom's so happy. What is it like going on vacation with five kids? It's it's like flushing money down a toilet. <laughs> it is it's great, but it's also I mean, I will say this like we did Disney and you know, it's they didn't argue all day. And by the way, my kids, I've got five kids. They're it's like they might as well be like uh you know, Repul putting Republicans and Democrats together because they they'll argue and they'll take turns. They're like, "I'm mad at this one." <laughs> yeah. But like when we were at Disney or or Universal, they had a good time. It's God. like, do you so do you find yourself having to like take like make mental mental notes? Like I haven't spent enough time with this one or. Yeah, I mean, it's always you know, it's it's always a decision making process right you're always kind of well with each of them when they turn 10 i take a trip with them uh it's usually like i have like some show and they'll come and uh you know like i took jack to alaska i took Mari to san francisco i took uh katie i had a show at in big sur so i took her there and then we'll turn it into like where it's just us but yeah, it's, it's an ongoing thing, but like some of it is they have such, and I find it really annoying. Their tastes are so different. Yeah. So I'll take, um, you know, or if I like, I'll go on a birthday party and the birthday party is at a Nick game, which sounds insane. Then I'll take Michael to a Nick game and then Jack won't want to go to the Nick game. So it's like he doesn't want to do it. You know, he's 16. He's like, I just want to play on, you know, like he, like this whole lockdown thing. He's like, this is amazing. <laughs> he's like, this is like a like it is the idea that like a 16 year old boy would come up with. What if we just had to stay home and you could be on your screen as much as you want? Like, that's what <laughs> the pandemic has been for him. And so, yeah, it's always juggling different. And then my daughters are far more interested in music, so I'll bring them to concerts. But yeah, it's, but it is what I, I love doing international shows. I love history and cultures and stuff like that. So I'll usually pick a, a place and I'll bring the whole family or I will, like when my daughters are on spring break, I'm, do, I'm bringing them to Mexico City and I'm doing a show in Mexico City interesting i just i i i have a hard time doing a vacation without doing a show yes me too like i yeah. i just look at it like we were talking in june georgia graduates i guess in whatever the month before june is yeah and it's called may may in yeah. may and then i was like well and i wanted to take her and isla and leanne on i wanted to take them to europe yeah and i wanted to go let the girls plan it where they i wanted them to be interested yeah because i can tell you where to go in europe i've been everywhere because of travel channel yeah but i wanted them to go i i want to what i want to see is this yes and then yeah. and then fucking someone someone who will remain unnamed uh a comedian told me uh you'd be great in greece i was like for real and he's like uh you should do greece i did a show in greece really they uh, that's a good place athens i did a show in athens they were a great like great audience and so i said to my agents I, my meeting today yeah. i had i said leanne's like we're taking june july and august off three months are off bert's not touring because georgia uh family trip yeah. spend the summer with georgia and then take her to college yeah that's the goal and i was like i don't know who fucking takes three months off ali wong like not fucking not Bert Kreischer. So yeah, I, I was know. like, I was like, it's so like, I was like, and so what if we did this? What if we did this in June for two weeks? Just two weeks, right? I, I can do two weeks easy. And then when we go to Europe, I was like, what if we bang out Greece real quick? I want to do Greece. And my agents light up. They're like, oh, Greece is very interested. Let's do Greece. Yeah. And then and then Leanne's like, it seems like you're turning this into a tour. And I was like, I don't know how anyone doesn't work. 
Yeah, no, it's it's, but it's weird. I almost feel like calling it work is weird because it is. It's just at night for an hour. I I don't. You guys are going to bed anyway. Yeah, I don't feel like. Uh, I don't feel it doesn't feel torturous to me. It's definitely I mean, I know I'm contradicting what I was saying before, but it's like it, it's fun. And it's yeah. it's also it's. I don't know. I got to pee. I got to get yeah. you out of here. You got to be out of here by three, right? I don't know. I yeah, don't know it's two forty. OK, cool. we should wrap it up. We should wrap okay. it up. We'll get you out of here. Um, uh, nine specials. Yeah. But you'll, you're not that far off. How no, many I am. I, I'm, I'm, I don't. I'd be shocked if I live to nine specials. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at four right now. Five, maybe. I think four, five. I don't know. Yeah. Um, congrats, man. Thanks, I, you're, buddy. you're. I, th- I. It's funny. It's funny. How much I kind of look at like I, I forget that our kids are roughly the same age, but I look at you as you and Jeannie as like a goal. Oh, of like how nice. to how to fucking live your life and kind of stay grounded and and really succeed on big levels but also be the guy that t- took the family picture at disney world which i fucking loved because i was like that's oh, yeah. a legit family <laughs> oh yeah you gotta that's do not, it that's you not gotta do machine it. gun kelly and megan fox with whatever <laughs> kid they have <laughs> yeah yeah that's so funny well thanks for having me buddy thank you Appreciate for doing it. this man thank you this has thank been a blast you.